Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dara. All right. Um, that's very informative, and actually, I can relate to some of those. Um, our next guest wears many hats. He, is a, he, he was a Navy commander. Uh, he retired last year, having served in Gulf War in Iraq, as well as in defense of the Republic of Korea. He's also a patent lawyer, the co-founder and partner of Intellectual Property Law Group, LLC. But more relevantly, he was also the city councilman for Sunnyvale for eight years and the 57th mayor of the city. A really colorful and accomplished life indeed. Today, he will share some of his story from his campaign trails. So let's welcome Mr. Otto Lee. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I would say thank you for being here. It's a beautiful day out there, very sunny. And for you to be up here, in here, instead of out there at the beach, uh, that shows your dedication of what this is important to you and that the fact that you're actually thinking about and willing to serve. Uh, because at the end of the day, just like Lily said earlier, is that, uh, you know, we have a lot of rights in this country as Americans. Privacy rights is something we talk about a lot. How important it is that our, our information is not being exposed. Well, guess what? Once you decide to become a public official, those rights are out the window for you because you are no longer, the, you, you're now a, a public uh, a figure whereby the legal rights on, on, on how much. So the thing is, if, if it's really important for you to keep a private life, that's some of those sacrifices that you are actually making by, by stepping uh, into the role of, of serving in the public. Um, that being said, I'm not here trying to discourage you to run. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give you the, hopefully, some uh, 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 lessons learned that we've had. Uh, obviously, with 12 minutes, we can tell you all the stories on the, uh, on, on the campaign trail that we have, but uh, I certainly want to backtrack some of the, the uh, uh, things that have been talked about by, by, uh, by Lily and also by Gilbert as well. Um, we uh, have been serving in different roles. I mean, for example, Gilbert has served in city council. You have served on school board. Lily has served uh, on both of those as well. Now the, the first directly elected uh, uh, woman, the Asian mayor in, in, in Fremont. These are uh, really uh, amazing accomplishments. And in some ways, in, in the Bay Area, we actually spoiled. What I mean by that was when I served as the mayor of Sunnyvale, uh, there was an article uh, on the San Jose Mercury News that says they are, you know, these are the Asian American mayors in, 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 Sil in Silicon Valley. And there were actually five of us uh, out of all different cities. And I tell you, if you go to the East Coast, go to the South, go to the Midwest, uh, you'd be lucky to even find one Asian uh, 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 representative on, on school board. Uh, and then the sad part is like even in New Jersey, this very uh, latest election we had, there were issues that is very race related in some of the campaign material that we saw that is absolutely disgusting, uh, shall we say. And, and when you are out in the public, besides the privacy issues, you need to have some thick skins to be able to deal with these issues and to fight back. And, and the, the, there's some stereotype that Asian Americans have, have, have always have to endure. We are the ones who study well in school. We are supposed to be the one who are the model minority. We're supposed to be the one who do well as engineers and, and go to school and to, to get the, the degrees. But we are not really good leaders. These Asians are not good leaders. We need somebody else. What the heck are you talking about? If we can do well in school, we can do well in, 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 in our jobs. Why is leadership not a, a main part of it in order to do, do well in those jobs? So these are type of stereotypes that we have lived with. Uh, and in some ways, if we can in some ways also benefit from some of it. As in, for example, like in the state government, we had the state election. I mean, just now with the governors, the treasurer and controller, and John Chung, who I supported strongly for a long time when he ran for controller, he ran for treasurer. And that more minority myth almost even helped him in the way that, oh, Asians, you're good with numbers, right? Yeah, controller does a great job for you. Treasurer does great. Oh, governor? Eh, I'm not so sure if you're, no. So, so that, that's the type of issue that in the back of people's head is still there. Now, I'm not going to say that's the only reason why, why John didn't make it to the top two. Uh, but at the same time, I think these are some of the, the hidden prejudices that we are who we are. And I think it's important to not get those issues 
to bog us down, but to actually go through past it, these people call bamboo ceiling or what you want to call it, that uh, there's so much that we're bringing to the table than the fact that this, what people see. And, and one of the things that I would always tell people, when you're running a campaign, one of the most important thing you could do for a campaign is take a good picture. Take a good picture. You know what I'm talking about, taking a good picture? It's actually take the time to really get a good shot that when you look at it, and not just by yourself, but other people look at it and says, oh, I like this guy, oh, I like this gal. He or she looks really interesting, looks fun, looks positive, somebody I want to talk to. Because sometimes, I, no matter how good a candidate you are, how well you've prepared yourself, the only thing that people see in all this material that you send away around, whether it's email, whether it's, it's posters or flyers or, or campaign signs, the only thing people really see is that picture. And if your picture just doesn't cut it necessarily, it makes a difference. People say, eh, I'm not so sure. And, and this type of biases is in the back of people's heads. What do you want to know or not? It is there. And I just want to make that very, a very simple thing so, so, so important because as they say in the presidential debate or in the debate, right? You would think it's the arguments and all the, all the issues and who wins and who loses. Well, it turned out at the end of the debate, people said, you know, the content of what's being said is less than 20%. It's actually how it's being said, what the person's wearing, and the facial expressions. That actually dominates uh, from the audience point of view of who wins and who loses a, a debate. So, in, in some ways, in terms of campaigning, I, I have told people, not necessarily the most qualified of the best candidate wins. It's, I, I hate to say it, it's a democracy. Even though that's the case, the whole campaign itself, it's a big marketing exercise. Look who's in the White House right now. I personally really don't think he's at all the, the qualified candidate for that position, and not going into more details, but the thing is, I think he has done enough of the packaging uh, of, of marketing. I mean, I do think one thing he's really good at, he's very good at marketing himself. And that part, he was able to use that skill set to get him to where he is. So in terms of campaigning, I'm not saying you need to turn yourself into Donald Trump. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there are, there are issues, there are, there are sales skills, there's a marketing skills that needs to be part of your messaging to get the word out. For example, getting your name out, right, getting your name out. As they say, it's almost better to have a bad name than have no name. Right? If people don't know you, they're not going to vote for you. If you don't have a very good name, that could be a problem too. I'm going to give an example of that. Okay? So myself, I made that cardinal sin on my very first election. Okay? Everybody knows me as Otto Lee. All right, Otto Lee. Okay? That's a pretty easy name, easy to spell. You can screw it up. You can spell my first name backwards. It's fine. Right? Well, on the form, that you fill out on, on your candidate statements is actually ask, ask for your first name, your middle name, and your last name. I didn't know better. I was following the first time, so I followed the rules. First name, auto, put in my middle name, and then last name, and turn it in, right? Never thought much about it. A week later, a good friend of mine, when they got his ballot statement, called me up and says, Otto, I didn't know your middle name is that. I'm like, yeah, what's the problem? Uh, it's going to cost you about 5% of your vote. It's like, what? I said, oh my God, you're right. My middle name, which is picked by my, by, by, by the way, my dad picked my name in the baby book. Uh, a, B, C, D, went to O, he likes these names. So Otto is my first name. My middle name is Oswald. O-S-W-A-L-D. Now you see the problem. When you have Lee and you have Oswald in your name, and you're in the ballot, you will lose a few points. That's my name. I was born with that name, right? What do you do about it, right? So that was my first mistake on, on my name. Now, I did win my first election, 52%, but I'm sure I probably could have got 54 or something had that middle name was not there. But it was not even necessary, but that's like a rookie mistake, right? Sometimes you're born with it. Look at Barack Obama. His middle name is what? Hussein. Hussein? I mean, right? Was he? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Some, some things is in you, you don't have to emphasize it. You don't have to put it in there. In my case, I didn't need to put that in there. And that was just one of those rookie mistakes you have. And, 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 and um, so how you look, your name. Uh, but at the end of the day, though, you really do have to do the hard work when it talks to campaigning. Get some good walking shoes, right? Get some good walking shoes. 
unless you're running for like the whole Senate or, or governor or state, if you're looking especially local government, especially we're talking about like the city of Fremont, for example, when you split into districts, you need to really know your numbers. What I mean by numbers is you need to know how many voters are in your district, how many people are going to vote in this election, what the percentage number is, and how many doors you need to actually knock to talk to those people. All right? Because as much as we talk about fundraising, right? what's the money for? It's not for Gilbert. It's not for me. Right? The money we raise is all about going to the printers. Right? Going to the postage to get your name out there. Well, sometimes the best way to get your name out there is just knock and talk to people. So attending, you know, debates, of course, going to your farmer's market, you know, every Saturday and talk to people, but, you know, your PTA meetings, uh, your, your, your local community neighborhood organizations, all of those are ways to get your name out there, right? Until people know who you are and have a positive feeling about you that, hey, this is somebody I trust, this is somebody that's good. And the word does get around, but ultimately, look, we're in Silicon Valley. People are busy. We have busy lives. Not that many people are really out there doing those things. We expect, I mean, the retirees actually are the best ones that you get because you can get them during the day, you can get them in the evening, they will have the time to talk to you. Sometimes it's almost too nice because you're like, look, I've talked to you for 10 minutes, I gotta go, <laughs> right? You can, sometimes you knock on doors because I'm too, too, too engaged a participant. But at the end of the day, you do need to get your name out there so people know who you are. It's statistics. You gotta look at the vote, voter database. You need to know who are the voters. Uh, I'm not sure all of you know this, but when you're registered to vote, a lot of information is public. Not only your name, not only your address, not only your sex and age, your party affiliation is a public record. If you check the box as Democrat or Republican or no party, all that is public. So when a candidate runs, these are lists that candidates can buy. And I encourage you, if you're planning on running, you should be getting that list now. Right after this June primary election, this is the time to get that list. There are various companies, there's a company called PDI, which are Political Data Inc. They have one of the better uh, sources of, of these data they have collected all these years. Uh, and, and having these lists uh, to figure out who the voters are in your own district is very important to know what type of messaging you need to come up with to talk to them. When you knock on doors for people, it's a great way to listen to your neighbors and to your, your constituents. What issue really matters to them? You think you know what it is, but guess what? When you start knocking on doors, you'll be so surprised that there are things that you didn't realize is such a big deal to the community. And that's how you can hone your message. And it's not something that I could say, you should talk about the environment, or you should talk about, maybe a pet park is a big deal in your, in your, your environment. Maybe a lot of dog pooping somewhere, there's a big issues in that neighborhood, right? So every neighborhood has different issues that you need to know about. Um, as a, as a, a parent of, a, of, of three daughters, I mean, the, my perspective of what I think is important in life is very different from districts where you have a lot of single people living in the apartment complexes versus single family homes. And even uh, the height of buildings, like when I first ran, um, I mean, I was born in Hong Kong, right? I mean, I have 40, 50 story buildings I lived around. That's something I'm, com com I mean, very, very used to. But for, for many people who have been growing up in our communities in, in here, uh, my, like my opponent put down her, his candidate statement, uh, are your, are your backyards being overshadowed by skyscrapers? Well, the skyscraper, he's talking about a six-story building on Matilda Avenue in Sunnyvale. <laughs> okay, we laugh, but guess what? That got him a lot of votes. Those are serious issues to some people. So I think it is important for us to really understand the constituency, understand who you are, and also not get complacent. Get, get complacent. When you run, you gotta run like you're losing. You gotta run like you really want your vote. I really need to go out there and hit the block. I mean, you start sweating because people watch you. The fact that you're running around, that you're sweating, you're really hitting a pavement, people say, hey, guess what? This guy's gonna work. Because look how hard he's working on that, right? Because I got a bunch of, a lot of endorsement. I was planning commission chair. I've got all the endorsement. My opponent at the time, first race, only had one endorsement. That was only police and fire because his uncle was a police chief. I said, okay, no problem. They could support him. They still like me, right? I won by 52-48. And the best part is, at the first election, like the, the, when we opened the, 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 the ballot, uh, at 8 o'clock, right, when the ballot closes, 8.20, the absentee ballot came in, I was at 40%, 2.5%. Right? 
two people raised. I was at 40 percent, and he was 60 percent. I couldn't believe it. I said, how could it be? I have done all the work. He's a brand new name with one endorsement. He's 60 percent. I'm 40. How did that happen? Well, it turns out it was because of the fact that my mailers, I thought I knew, people knew who I was. It was a complete disaster. I thought I did good on those. All this endorsement, I thought it makes a big difference. Turns out I didn't really care. The only thing that made the difference was all the hard work of all the door knocking. So all the campaign team that has go around and the support group that worked so hard in the last month. So the ballot came in throughout the evening when the, 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 the vote came back, basically saying, oh, from 40, 42, 44, 46, 40. So finally, I was able to make it through the 50 odd percent. But the point is that it is hard work. It is pounding the pavement, knocking on doors. That's what it really matters at the end of the day. And uh, well, I'm told to, 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 to shut up now. So thank you very much for paying attention to me on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, Otto. I'm sure after your story, everybody is going to go back and re-examine their name, first, middle, and last name. <laughs>